Nikola Tesla New York Laboratories 1889 The money Tesla made from licensing his AC patents made him independently wealthy and gave him the time and funds to pursue his own interests. In 1889, Tesla moved out of the Liberty Street shop Peck and Brown had rented and for the next dozen years working out of a series of workshop, laboratory spaces in Manhattan. These included a lab at 175 Grand Street, 1889-1892, the fourth floor of 33-35 South Fifth Avenue, 1892-1895, and sixth and seventh floors of 46 and 48 East Houston Street, 1895-1902. Tesla and his hired staff conducted some of his most significant work in these workshops. Tesla Coil In the summer of 1889, Tesla traveled to the 1889 Exposition Universal in Paris and learned of Heinrich Hertz's 1886-1888 experiments that proved the existence of electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves. Tesla found this new discovery, refreshing, and decided to explore it more fully. In repeating and then expanding on these experiments, Tesla tried powering a Ruhmkorff coil with a high-speed alternator he had been developing as part of an improved arc lighting system, but found that the high-frequency current overheated the iron core and melted the insulation between the primary and secondary windings in the coil. To fix this problem Tesla came up with his, oscillating transformer, with an air gap instead of insulating material between the primary and secondary windings and an iron core that could be moved to different positions in or out of the coil. Later called the Tesla coil, it would be used to produce high voltage, low current, high frequency alternating current electricity. He would use this resonant transformer circuit in his later wireless power work. Citizenship On 30 July 1891, aged 35, Tesla became a naturalized citizen of the United States. In the same year, he patented his Tesla coil. Wireless lighting After 1890, Tesla experimented with transmitting power by inductive and capacitive coupling using high AC voltages generated with his Tesla coil. He attempted to develop a wireless lighting system based on near-field inductive and capacitive coupling and conducted a series of public demonstrations where he lit Geissler tubes and even incandescent light bulbs from across a stage. He spent most of the decade working on variations of this new form of lighting with the help of various investors but none of the ventures succeeded in making a commercial product out of his findings. In 1893 at St. Louis, Missouri, the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and the National Electric Light Association, Tesla told onlookers that he was sure a system like his could eventually conduct intelligible signals or perhaps even power to any distance without the use of wires, by conducting it through the earth. Tesla served as a vice president of the American Institute of Electrical Engineers from 1892 to 1894, the forerunner of the modern-day IEEE, along with the Institute of Radio Engineers. Polyphase System and the Columbian Exposition By the beginning of 1893, Westinghouse engineer Charles F. Scott and then Benjamin G. Lamb had made progress on an efficient version of Tesla's induction motor. Lamb found a way to make the polyphase system it would need compatible with older single-phase AC and DC systems by developing a rotary converter. Westinghouse Electric now had a way to provide electricity to all potential customers and started branding their polyphase AC system as the Tesla polyphase system. They believed that Tesla's patents gave them patent priority over other polyphase AC systems. Westinghouse Electric asked Tesla to participate in the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, where the company had a large space in the electricity building devoted to electrical exhibits. Westinghouse Electric won the bid to light the exposition with alternating current and it was a key event in the history of AC power, as the company demonstrated to the American public the safety, reliability, and efficiency of an alternating current system that was polyphase and could also supply the other AC and DC exhibits at the fair. A special exhibit space was set up to display various forms and models of Tesla's induction motor. 
The rotating magnetic field that drove them was explained through a series of demonstrations, including an egg of Columbus that used the two-phase coil found in an induction motor to spin a copper egg making it stand on end. Tesla visited the fair for a week during its six-month run to attend the International Electrical Congress and put on a series of demonstrations at the Westinghouse exhibit. A specially darkened room had been set up where Tesla showed his wireless lighting system, using a demonstration he had previously performed throughout America and Europe. These included using high-voltage, high-frequency alternating current to light wireless gas discharge lamps. Steam-powered oscillating generator during his presentation at the International Electrical Congress in the Columbian Exposition Agriculture Hall, Tesla introduced his steam-powered reciprocating electricity generator that he patented that year, something he thought was a better way to generate alternating current. Steam was forced into the oscillator and rushed out through a series of ports, pushing a piston up and down that was attached to an armature. The magnetic armature vibrated up and down at high speed, producing an alternating magnetic field. This induced alternating electric current in the wire coils located adjacent. It did away with the complicated parts of a steam engine, generator, but never caught on as a feasible engineering solution to generate electricity. Consulting on Niagara in 1893, Edward Dean Adams, who headed the Niagara Falls Cataract Construction Company, sought Tesla's opinion on what system would be best to transmit power generated at the falls. Over several years, there had been a series of proposals and open competitions on how best to do it. Among the systems proposed by several US and European companies were two-phase and three-phase AC, high-voltage DC, and compressed air. Adams asked Tesla for information about the current state of all the competing systems. Tesla advised Adams that a two-phased system would be the most reliable and that there was a Westinghouse system to light incandescent bulbs using two-phase alternating current. The company awarded a contract to Westinghouse Electric for building a two-phase AC generating system at the Niagara Falls, based on Tesla's advice and Westinghouse's demonstration at the Columbian Exposition. At the same time, a further contract was awarded to General Electric to build the AC distribution system. The Nikola Tesla Company in 1895, Edward Dean Adams, impressed with what he saw when he toured Tesla's lab, agreed to help found the Nikola Tesla Company, set up to fund, develop, and market a variety of previous Tesla patents and inventions as well as new ones. Alfred Brown signed on, bringing along patents developed under Peck and Brown. The board was filled out with William Birch Rankin and Charles F. Coney. It found few investors since the mid-1890s were a tough time financially and the wireless lighting and oscillators patents it was set up to market never panned out. The company handled Tesla's patents for decades to come. Lab fire in the early morning hours of 13 March 1895, the South Fifth Avenue building that housed Tesla's lab caught fire. It started in the basement of the building and was so intense Tesla's fourth-floor lab burned and collapsed into the second floor. The fire not only set back Tesla's ongoing projects, but it also destroyed a collection of early notes and research material, models, and demonstration pieces, including many that had been exhibited at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. Tesla told the New York Times, I am in too much grief to talk. What can I say? After the fire Tesla moved to 46 and 48 East Houston Street and rebuilt his lab on the 6th and 7th floors. X-ray experimentation starting in 1894, Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radiant energy of, invisible, kinds after he had noticed damaged film in his laboratory in previous experiments, later identified as, Röntgen rays, or, X-rays. His early experiments were with Crookes tubes, a cold cathode electrical discharge tube. Tesla may have inadvertently captured an X-ray image, predating, by a few weeks, Wilhelm Röntgen's December 1895 announcement of the discovery of X-rays, when he tried to photograph Mark Twain illuminated by a Geissler tube, an earlier type of gas discharge tube. 
The only thing captured in the image was the metal locking screw on the camera lens. In March 1896, after hearing of Röntgen's discovery of X-ray and X-ray imaging, radiography, Tesla proceeded to do his own experiments in X-ray imaging, developing a high-energy single-terminal vacuum tube of his own design that had no target electrode and that worked from the output of the Tesla coil. The modern term for the phenomenon produced by this device is bremsstrahlung or braking radiation. In his research, Tesla devised several experimental setups to produce X-rays. Tesla held that, with his circuits, the instrument will enable one to generate Röntgen rays of much greater power than obtainable with ordinary apparatus. Tesla noted the hazards of working with his circuit and single-node X-ray producing devices. In his many notes on the early investigation of this phenomenon, he attributed the skin damage to various causes. He believed early on that damage to the skin was not caused by the Röntgen rays, but by the ozone generated in contact with the skin, and to a lesser extent, by nitrous acid. Tesla incorrectly believed that X-rays were longitudinal waves, such as those produced in waves in plasmas. These plasma waves can occur in force-free magnetic fields. On the 11th of July 1934, the New York Herald Tribune published an article on Tesla, in which he recalled an event that occasionally took place while experimenting with his single electrode vacuum tubes. A minute particle would break off the cathode, pass out of the tube, and physically strike him, radio remote control. In 1898, Tesla demonstrated a boat that used a coherer-based radio control, which he dubbed, Telautomaton, to the public during an electrical exhibition at Madison Square Garden. Tesla tried to sell his idea to the U.S. military as a type of radio-controlled torpedo, but they showed little interest. Remote radio control remained a novelty until World War I and afterward, when a number of countries used it in military programs. Tesla took the opportunity to further demonstrate teleautomatics in an address to a meeting of the commercial club in Chicago, while he was traveling to Colorado Springs, on 13 May 1899.